welcome back to another video. It's Antoine, your favorite service warfare officer. I got another banger for you guys. I'm going to be talking about how to apply to OCS, what OCS is, and everything that it entails, and how to find all the resources. Sorry that it took me so long to post this video. I know a lot of people have been having requests in it. They've been writing comments on a YouTube video that I did previously. Uh, what is OCS? How to apply? How do I get my foot in the door? So I'm going to answer all those questions today, post all the information that I can, and then if you have any more questions, you can always ask. I mean, I'm going to be posting a day in the life of a surface welfare officer, so stick around for those videos to come, uh, especially for you future surface welfare officers out there. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right into this video. First, I want to kick it off with what is OCS? So OCS is Officer Candidate School. When I went, it was a 12-week program, but now it is a 13-week program. Um, I believe they added some type of cyber training to the curriculum, but this is their website. The first thing I would do is uh, to get a little bit of background on what OCS is, uh, what they have to offer, and what their mission is, and what their goals are. So this is the website that you're going to use to get a little bit of insight of what OCS actually is. Um, so right here, you could just Google search this, type in Officer Candidate School, NSTC, and it should pop up. But click the link. Uh, you should come to a page similar to this. Um, come down to OCS, go ahead and click it. And then down below, it'll have Officer Candidate School, uh, and then I'll have a bunch of tabs down here. So just go through the tabs, look at the program overview. It's going to explain, you know, what the basis of the program is and then all the requirements, required items for actually going to OCS. So once you get selected, this is a good tool to reference because it'll tell you, you know, what to bring, what not to bring, things like that. And also it has a travel tab, which it tells you how to get there, directions, where to check in you know, uh, places you can stay like the Navy Lodge or the Navy Gateway Inn and Suites. So this is definitely something to check out. You'll get a, a scoop of the physical fitness assessment. If you aren't already enlisted and you're watching this video and you're trying to get a commission through OCS, um, my advice would be to definitely dig into the physical fitness standards if you do not, if you're not familiar with them. Dig into them so that way you know and you prepare yourself before you go there. Because the last thing you want to do is go there unprepared and then you have to sit around waiting because you failed the physical fitness portion. But yeah, so look at this website. It's definitely a great tool. All right, so next we're going to My Navy HR, which is the new NPC, Navy Personnel Command website. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, I'm going to navigate through it and uh, show you guys how to find information. So first thing you wanna do, this is the home page. You want to go to the career management tab and click uh, career counseling. And then from here, you have the commissioning programs tab. You're gonna click that. And then here's where everything that you're gonna be uh, looking for. The first thing you need to do if you're applying to OCS which there's other programs on here as well, but for this video specifically, we're talking about OCS. So the first thing you need to do is, like with everything in the military, everything has a reference. So come over here to the reference section and the Op Navis 1420 One Bravo Commissioning Programs Manual, this is your bread and butter. This manual will tell you the do's, the don'ts, the how, the why, the who, the what, it tells you everything you need to know about applying for this program. So when you click the link, it should pop up. I'm gonna open it for you right here. You slow down to the table of contents, chapter four, OCS. Literally read this chapter and understand it in its entirety. Read it twice, read it three times, read it four times. I literally read it probably like three times. I read it with my mentor. We took notes, make sure we understood every single thing about the program, especially if there was something like a waiver or anything like that. Like definitely understand like what the requirements are. So dig into this reference deeply and know the ins and outs. And then also for the appendixes, you have Charlie, which is the checklist, but do not rely on this 
appendix for the checklist. The instruction itself is good, but the checklist is not the latest and greatest. So do not rely on this checklist, but I will show you how to find the good checklist. So go back to your uh, My Navy HR Commissioning Programs page, and the checklist will be right here on the Officer Candidate School. It's going to give you all the requirements that you need to build your package, in which we'll break it down. So you're going to click that. Um, this first portion up top is going to be uh, the different types of designators you can apply for. Keep in mind of the designation number because that is going to be what is put on your application. And you can apply for more than one designator, in which I will get into that when we get into the application. But um, the biggest thing um, I would say about the checklist is this is what your package is is going to consist of. These are all items you are putting together to build your package. Um, so I stress attention to detail. It is very, very important. They will accept nothing less. Even if you left out the blank page, they will kick it back to you, I'm telling you. So this part right here is for you to take your ASTB. The ASTB is only for certain designators. So you would just have to read the instruction um, and determine what designator you're applying for and what tests they require. So if I can give you an example for SWO, the OAR is the only test I need to take. Um, if you're just curious and want to take the ASTB, you can, but it's not required for SWO. Um, for pilot, the ASTB is definitely required. Just look at what designator you are applying for and that will determine what test you need to take. This is the point of contact to uh, set up that test. Um, so just send them an email and then they will get back to you if you need to do anything else. Um, but yeah, let's dive into the items of the checklist. So the application, obviously we're gonna talk about that. Just know that uh, a good chunk of the application is on your checklist. Your last three years of evals is very important. Um, you do not want any gaps, not, not even a day. There is a link for the officer appraisal sheets. This is what this section is talking about. You're going to use those sheets to get officer appraisals. It has to be an officer from the community uh, which you're trying to join. Let me show you what that looks like. So here's your interview appraisal sheet. So you basically fill it out. The only thing you have to fill out is the top portion and then the person who's doing your interview will fill out everything else. You can do this on the phone. You can do it in person, which I think is the best option. And then you can do whatever other type of electronic media, but in person is always the best to do a sit down one-on-one -on -one with somebody and for them to get the you know the best judgment of your character and who you are and what you stand for so i did for mine i did three appraisal sheets i've seen people do more than three but three is the minimum so i did three so you can do one in-house interview it has to be lieutenant and above and then your other interviews have to be off ship these interviews do not have to be in a panel i know most people are used to doing like a panel board but yeah they're gonna fill this out you know put their comments give you a rating on you know your appearance you know your poise your confidence you know your leadership potentials they're gonna ask you scenario questions they're gonna judge you based on how you respond can you put together a well-trained thought you know any things like that so yeah interview sheet pretty simple uh, your letter of recommendations this section is kind of interesting to me because it's on the checklist but it is not required I know a lot of people stress over, you know, getting a letter of recommendations and it has to be, you know, having it being from a high ranking person, you know, a captain, an admiral, you know, things of that nature. Let's just say I did not submit a letter of recommendation uh, with my package and I still got selected for OCS. So if you get one, awesome. Add it to your package. Boom. If you don't, don't stress. All right. The biggest thing about age waivers is just knowing the instruction and knowing if you actually can get a waiver so and if you can boom submit it and you're good to go
One thing that I submitted with my miscellaneous documents is a letter to the board on my NJP, which is non-judicial punishment for, you know, civilian people that are watching this. That is something that I decided to submit with my package in miscellaneous documents because I thought it was important for me to, you know, explain my situation and explain how it had an impact on my life and choices I made to make myself better for, you know, my future. But you can throw in anything in there. You can put in your schools, you know, your trainings and associates, you know, anything like that. Those intentionally left blank pages, I think there's three of them. Uh, definitely keep an eye out for those because they will get you if it's not in there. I'm telling you. The final portion is your medical. So the way I did my package, which was something I referenced a little bit earlier, is you have to get your package in which is your completed package with no hiccups, and you have to get medically cleared. So just because you have your medical documents submitted does not mean you're medically cleared. So what I did and what I recommend is send your medical stuff in your package separate. So send all your medical documents completed. So that way, if you have any medical conditions that you they kick it back to you saying, hey, we need more information, you know, you have time to, you know, get that information to them so that way they can clear you medically. Because without that letter of clearance through the medical for their side, you will not move forward in the process. So yeah, definitely submit them separate, but you don't have to. You can submit it all at once, but it just benefits you if they have to kick something back. You already have the medical stuff in, and then you're just putting together your package to, you know, submit that later. But yeah, that's the checklist. Definitely come down and look at the notes if, you know, the notes apply um, for each section. And then print it out. Once you put it together, mark it off, then submit it. Coming back to this page, uh, we're going to talk about where do I get the application? All right, so your application comes from this hyperlink right here. So this is your application. I'm going to pull it up. Basically highlight the, the key components of the application. Most of the components of the application are very self-explanatory. You're just filling in information, but some parts are very important. So click that link and we'll, we'll get into it. Your application is very self-explanatory. You're just plugging in your information, but there are some key points that I'm just going to highlight. So right here on the first page, section three, this is where I told you those numbers on the checklist for your designator, this is where they're going to go. And then, you know, fill it out the information, blah, blah, blah. Go ahead and scroll down. So one of the things that I was told that is a good thing to include in your package is your proficiency with Microsoft, things like that. So include that in here for your special abilities. And then this is that section I was talking about where I had to include my NJP which uh, if you read the instruction, you already know that you can't have any NJPs within that three year window. So your personal statement is probably one of the most important parts of your package. And then attention to detail, it's like stay in between 200 and 250 words. And then in this section, you know, you have your bullets right there, why you are applying for a commission and then one of the biggest things is how are you a good fit in the community that you're applying for? So if you're applying for multiple designators, talk about each one. So when you come down to the Navy Corps values, honor, courage, commitment, you're explaining what each one means to you and then how it would apply to you as an officer. And then this part, this is where you do your sit down with your CEO and they are going to be grading you on these traits here. Um, and then the next portion that your CEO, this is your CEO's recommendation, the write up. I haven't come across a situation where the CEO actually wrote the letter of recommendation. Like you will have to write up your CEO's recommendation and then based on you know your interview, they will chop it and put their touches on it. I would definitely take my time and get as much guidance as I can on this section right here. Um, but other than that, that is, you know, basically the application in a nutshell. And that's it. Okay, so now you may be asking yourself, I have the reference, I have the checklist, I have the application. Now, how the heck do I get a board schedule? So if you come back to this page right here, you'll see this 
hyperlink right here. Do not use this hyperlink for your board schedules because it is out of date. I'm just gonna show you the example of what the board schedule looks like on this and then I will show you how to find the updated one. So let's open this up, go ahead and click that. This is your board schedule right here. Keep in mind, you know, the highlight, it doesn't mean anything special, it just means they changed something. All right, so whatever board you wanna apply for, this is what you're looking at on in this section right here. What board you want over here. I'm a SWO, so let's just use SWO for example. So I wanna see the next SWO board, which is right here. And then you have your application due date. The due date is when your package and your medical is clear. That has to be in before the due date. And then the board convene date is just when the board members get together to review all the packages. So definitely keep an eye out for due dates because they can get pushed forward. All right, so enough with that. Let me show you how to find the most updated board schedule. So if you haven't heard of Air Warriors, definitely create an account um, and get familiar with this platform. For the board schedule, search board schedule. Somebody has posted the most updated one. So yeah, this is a great website. So definitely check this out, explore it, you know, dive in deep, um, navigate through it, look at the different uh, forms that they have on here. Um, and then once you get accepted and you have a class date, go back in here, look at the class date, and then you can communicate with your class before you even get there. Just take a look at it. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. All right, guys. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, I gave you all the information that you need. Definitely, you know, read the instruction and then those other references. Make sure you check out the OCS webpage. There's a lot of good information on there. Use Air Warriors. Air Warriors is a fantastic tool that you can use. Um, it is a great form. There's a bunch of people just like you wanting to be a SWO, wanting to be, you know, an intel officer, wanting to be a pilot. They're all in there, hungry for information. They're even putting out information to help everybody else. Attention to detail is very important when you're putting together this package. The board will accept nothing less, I'm telling you. They will kick back your package in a heartbeat. Uh, but the good thing is that they are very helpful, but you have resources out there. You have Facebook groups. There is the Future Mustang group that I'm in. Shoot me a comment on here and I'll review your package. But yeah, other than that, get your package in. Don't except no if somebody tells you don't submit a package submit it the worst that can happen is you'll get told no from the board so if you really want to be an officer if you have the you know the will and the determination to do it go out there and do it five years ago um if you asked me if i was going to be an officer and if you asked some people that i worked with if i was going to be an officer they'd tell you no um and i'll tell you no but i made up my mind and i set a goal for myself and i didn't give up so um, if you really want it, go out there and get it. Especially, you know, my friends that are out there thinking about it, um, submit your package. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys uh, thought this video was very helpful. You know, I tried to give as much information as I can. If I skipped over something, please, 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 please let me know. Um, and I will make sure I elaborate on it uh, in a, a future video or anything like that. But yeah, stick around for more videos to come. Um, I got a ton of footage of everything I've been doing out to sea. Like I said, I'm going to be doing day in the life videos of a service welfare officer. Please give this video a thumbs up. Uh, please share with your friends. Uh, hit that subscribe button. And if you want specific content or if you have specific questions, please hit me up. And that's all I got for you guys. If you got anything for me, you know where I'll be.